Warning, if you are a latte drinking, Tesla driving, virtue signaling, windmill loving, fossil fuel hating, feminized male loving, gender fluid, limp wristed beta male, you may find this video disturbing. We advise you turn it off now because it might cause your head to explode. <laughs> that's over with wow that was really scary i was getting a little frightened at that point in time but that's not what i'm here to talk to you about what i'm here to talk to you about is the insane crazy and massive blowout earnings that came in for exxon today july 29th second quarter Record earnings came in from Exxon and it was nothing short of a complete blowout. So Exxon basically clocked in for the second quarter of 2022. Complete, unbelievable record earnings. The uh, earnings came in at $17.85 billion in one quarter. That basically quadruples what it did a year ago in the same quarter and it's just amazing and it hit record profits and it's been confirmation of what we've been talking about on this channel for a very long time. In addition, revenues jumped 71% and sales came in at over $115 billion. That compared to 67.74 billion the same quarter last year. But the thing that I focus on and the thing that I found really insane, and this is uh, how, in my opinion, you really measure the value uh, that a company is delivering to the shareholders is free cash flow. I focus on that much more than earnings because earnings can be manipulated by various charges and accounting uh, maneuvers, etc. But the really amazing thing to me was in this quarter, Exxon generated 20 billion dollars of free cash flow absolutely amazing and completely unprecedented all sectors of the business performed extraordinarily but one thing that really stuck out for me and one thing that i really think is worth noting is their refining profits completely exploded and in that in the quarter they made 5.3 billion dollars from refining this is due to not only the enormous demand for re refined product, uh, which is gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel, but also uh, Exxon made some very well-timed and very well-thought-out additions to their refining capacity, uh, which led partially to them being able to earn this much money in the quarter. Darren Wood was quoted as saying, we're also helping meet increased demand by expanding our refining capacity by approximately 250,000 barrels per day in the first quarter of 2023, representing the industry's largest single capacity addition in the U.S. since 2012, as quoted from the chairman and CEO, Darren Woods. The stock responded today by going up to almost 97 and that represented a 4.6% increase just in one day. This capped out the performance on the stock, which is basically up 46% year to date, and that was following a 59% increase last year. So if you were in this stock the way we have been since March 2020, you are a very happy camper. Another thing I wanted to mention, which is of interest to the channel, is that Exxon, in the quarter, made another two discoveries in its incredible oil discovery area called Guyana. And it, this was uh, done in the Stabrock block, 
which is the area off the coast of Guyana, which Exxon has discovered a massive amount of oil since 2015. As I've said on previous videos, Exxon has identified 11 billion barrels of oil in this region. They are continuing to develop the region. So far, they are generating 340,000 barrels per day, which is ahead of schedule, way ahead of schedule. They will build this up in a very short period of time to a million barrels per day. Absolutely incredible. And as I've said on other videos, this is probably among, if not the greatest oil discovery in history. So on that last point, I have done three videos on Guyana, two that related to the Guyana discovery and how it relates to Exxon and uh, future shareholder value. And the third one I did, which has gotten a lot of attention, is basically, you know, what is this uh, Guyana discovery? What does it mean to Guyana itself? And how much could they uh, receive from this arrangement with Exxon? Uh, I went through the actual agreement, which I found, and uh, I'll put that uh, video up here at the end of this video, and you can take a look at it. I encourage you to take a look at it. It's really amazing. It goes through the math uh, based on the agreement of how much Guyana could make and how much Exxon and its partners could make. Okay, so what does this mean for Exxon shareholders and uh, where do we see it going from here? And uh, what should you do if you're either thinking of getting into the stock or if you are already in the stock as we are? Um, it's been a very rewarding investment over the last couple years. Uh, but the question is, will it continue? Now, I've done a lot of content on this channel where I have talked about um, where we are now and, and uh, where we're going in the future. Uh, I just did a video, which I will put up here at the end of this video, and you can take a look at where I talk about the in international oil and gas situation, which is important. You have to view uh, Exxon's future and Chevron and Occidental Petroleum and the others in the context of what's going on internationally. You can't just look at it in terms of what's going on in this country because that's very limited and you don't get the full picture. So I would encourage you to take a look at, at, at that content, but just to sum it up, there's a incredible energy shortage in Europe right now, which is not going away, that is related in part to uh, the sanctions with Russia. It's also related to uh, the push that many of the European countries made to go into green energy too quickly. Uh, they phased out or turned off their coal facilities and in many cases their nuclear facilities prematurely. Uh, so they became too dependent on green energy, which is unreliable, and um, simultaneously became massively um, indebted to Russia and dependent on Russia for their oil and gas, and now they're in a tremendous uh, bind. The reason this is important for Exxon is because Exxon is one of the largest exporters in the United States of LNG, liquefied natural gas. In fact, they're building new plants as we speak. Uh, much of that liquefied natural gas will be uh, exported to uh, Europe to try to make up for some of the Russian oil and gas. But my point is that the demand supply imbalance is not going to be corrected soon. Um, Europe is in a very bad position and it's questionable if they'll have enough gas to even heat their homes uh, in the winter. And uh, this is a very dire situation. So the long and short of it is the supply-demand imbalance is not going away with oil and gas. Exxon continues to be the best positioned oil and gas company in the world, I believe. Uh, it has the most vast resources, the largest scale, and it is involved in virtually every aspect of uh, exploration, refining, and chemicals. Uh, it's a vertically integrated company. Uh, and uh, all along that value chain, they are going to benefit. And as an Exxon Mobil shareholder, if you're involved, you will benefit also. Okay, so 
this has been a tremendous quarter. Um, I believe it's going to continue because I don't see uh, oil going below 100 for any prolonged period of time uh, in the near future or within the next couple of years. Um, the Russian situation with Ukraine uh, is an outlier. Uh, we can't predict what's going to happen there. Um, I personally believe if the U.S. government continues to fund um, Ukraine and, uh, and give them weapons along with uh, uh, additional resources being provided by Europe, this situation is just going to go on for a very long time with our support basically prolonging um, the conflict. So I don't think that situation is changing anytime soon. I don't think the fundamental demand uh, is changing anytime soon. And supply worldwide is con constrained by uh, ESG, which is this uh, predilection that people have toward green energy. And all the institutions jumped on board. And uh, the allocation of capital going toward the oil and gas business uh, has been curtailed for many, many years. So this uh, chronic underinvestment in the oil and gas business, uh, we are now uh, reaping the effects of it, and it is not good for the economies of the world, and it's not good for us on an individual basis because the cost of everything is going sky high. All right, well, that's what I have to say about this. I would say stay in your Exxon, uh, buy the dips. It's getting a little pricey now, but buy the dips. I think overall the company is still undervalued uh, compared to the incredible um, opportunities that they have. Uh, the investments that they're making are, are very exciting, including carbon capture, which I won't talk about on this uh, video. But carbon capture, uh, Darren Woods thinks it's a $3 trillion business, uh, which, is, which is insane. But maybe I'll do a video just on carbon capture. Uh, but for now, stick with your Exxon. Add to your positions on uh, dips. Enjoy the uh, dividend, which is around 4%. And we will continue to monitor the situation on this channel, as well as the rest of the capital markets. Uh, Fed policy we talk about, we talk about sp other specific investment ideas and uh, specific stocks to get into. Uh, we do deep dives on some different companies. Uh, we talk about uh, economics and it's all intended to make you a better and hopefully richer investor. If you got value out of this, please like and subscribe. And please give me your comments. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments. I get great comments from my subscribers. And uh, I promise to respond to every single comment. I can't respond to every comment, but I'm responding to 99% of the comments. And I try to respond to every single comment that is made. Okay? So thank you for joining. There's a plane coming overhead. And with that, I say goodbye. And I'll see you on the next video.